What's up YouTube and welcome to a pet based watercolour design. Now today I'm going to show you how you can take any photo of any pet and make it into a watercolour design. Now this may be a little bit different compared to other watercolour designs because we're going to use the curves tool to go ahead and create the shapes that we need. A black area, a white area, potentially a red and a yellow but depending on the dog that you choose. If you want to just simply follow along there's a link in the description down below to this photograph of this beautiful little dog in the description down below. There's no palette of course for today's design as we're using a photograph and all the brushes are built into Procreate. The only thing you are going to need is the Procreate canvas that's in the description down below which has the canvas texture ready for you to go. So with all that said, let's get started. So once you've downloaded the canvas that's in the description down below, if we take a look at our layers you'll notice that there is a canvas texture in here so I've just gone ahead and done that for you. And now the first step is to of course add the image of your pet. So we're going to go up to our actions, we're going to go ahead and hit the add option and then we're going to use the option of insert photo. And then once you've found the photo of your pet you can simply tap on it and Procreate will drop it into the canvas. You may need to go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And for this practice image that I've got here, we're just going to scale this dog up nice and large so it's nice and central like so. And then we can go ahead and tap on our cursor at the top there when we're done. So now you've added your image, the next thing you're going to want to do is take a look and see if you need to go ahead and remove the background. And to do that, all you're going to need to do is go up to your selection tool, use the option here of freehand, and then very loosely just go ahead and outline the pet that you've got and just erase the background so you can see I'm not taking too much time over this. I'm just simply going around the main body of the dog in this case and just do it, making a quick selection as I go. So we're just going to make our way just around the top of the ears here. Primarily you want to stay somewhat like a pixel or two within the actual body of the pet that you're going to go ahead and erase the background from. Because we're making this nice and quick and based on the style being watercolor, we can get away with quite a, quite a loose cut. So we're just then going to go ahead and go around the top of the ear on the right hand side here. You see I'm not spending too much time on this at all. We're just going to make a very quick cut just to remove the background. This will help us in the long run in case you've got like a background image if you took a photo of your pet in a garden for example or any other background anything that's going to sort of conflict with what we want to do. Now I'm going to come down here around the back of the dog here and then just simply just run this all the way down and off the bottom of my canvas here. If your dog is obviously fully bodied in the center there, you'll just need to go ahead and go all the way around and then tap on your start point and you'll make a selection. Then you'll see the zigzag lines now appear around the outside. You've selected the shape in the middle. And then what we wanna go ahead and do is tap on the option here of invert, which will select everything around the outside. Go up to your layer, tap on your photo and use the option of clear. And that will have got rid of the background there as you can see and we're left with just your dog or pet. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to duplicate the image of the pet, duplicate it. And we're actually going to go ahead and turn off the top one out of the two because we're going to come back to it later on. We just need it for some colors. The bottom one out of the two. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is use the curves tool to identify the main colors and areas of the face of the dog. So we're going to go up to our adjustments and we're going to go to curves. Now what we're going to see here is this gamma graph here. Don't be put off by it, it's pretty straightforward to use. And what we're going to do is this node here in the bottom left hand corner is our node for our blacks of the image. And this is our node in the top right for the whites. And the closer we bring them together, if I bring that right to the center and I bring this right to the center, the darker and lighter the image is going to be. So you really compress everything down into simple shapes. Now, of course, where I've positioned them for the moment, we've not got too many features of the dog's face. So I'm going to drag this node across from the bottom here along that bottom line to roughly here. And then I'm going to bring the top node across to pretty much sit vertical, if not slightly to the right. If I go to the left, you'll go too far and you'll have made the image inverted. So we're just going to bring it until we hit something like this. Now, the purpose of this particular step is to identify, as I mentioned, the main color areas of the face. We're breaking it down into its simple colors. We've got black, white, red and yellow in this example. And every pet will vary depending on their colors of their fur. If I go ahead now and tap on my adjustments because I'm done, I'll show you some examples of other pets. For example, this image here of a pug. 
you can see it's quite a dark image. There's not too many colors, of course, in there, but really there is a couple of things we need to try and pick out there. So what we're going to do is if we take a look at the curves graph for this one, I ended up going all the way to the left hand side and it's identified black, white, a dark blue and like a teal blue. And then you would use those four colors in able to do the rest of the tutorial. And as another example here, we've got a golden Labrador. Now from this one, if you take a look at the curves, they're way off to the right hand side because you want to try and identify lots of color area. So again, we've got black and white, which is our basic highlights and our basic shadows. And then everything in between is two tones of color. We've got red and we've got the yellows and we use them in order to colorize the pet according to their actual fur color. So you can see there the variance between how the curves may look. So you will need to go ahead and adjust your nodes accordingly depending on the pet and its fur. Switching back to the tutorial, we've now got our dog. So the next step is to go ahead and isolate those areas from each other. Before we do that, we're gonna go up to our layers and create a new layer. We're gonna go ahead and drag that layer underneath the colored version of the dog that we've got here. And on this empty layer, we're gonna go ahead and drag white onto the screen to fill up the whole thing. And then we're gonna go back to our layers and pinch the curved dog to the background of white image there. Now what we need to go ahead and do is create four layers depending on the colors that you see on the screen depending on your dog. Now we've got black, white, red, and yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and create four new layers and I'm gonna rename each one in a particular order. So just above the dog image here that we can see on the screen, I'm gonna rename this layer and I'm gonna call it black. And then I'm gonna go up a layer again. I'm gonna tap on this and I'm gonna rename it. And I'm gonna call it white. The next one up tap on it again, rename it, and I'm gonna call it red. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the top one, rename it, and I'm gonna call it yellow. Now it's in this order of choice because we need the black and white at the bottom, and then the darkest color out of the two colors you see on the screen here, and then the brightest color that you see on the screen at the top. So with the image of the pug, for example, this red here would be dark blue, and this up here would be teal. So then what we need to go ahead and do is if we tap on the image of the dog that's got the white background, we go up to our selection tool and we're going to use the automatic selection. Now what you're going to need to go ahead and do is tap on every area that you can see that's black. So for example, I tap on the nose, it's now highlighted that as white and means I've selected it. And I need to go ahead and tap on everywhere that's black. Now here's nice and easy because I can tap on the black and it all links up nicely all the way around. There may be occasions where you need to zoom in and just isolate a few little areas here and there of dark areas that match up to the color that we're trying to select. For example, just here on the nose. So that was quite nice and easy. We then go ahead and go to our layers. We tap on the black layer. We tap on it and we mask it. So what we've done there is we've selected all the black area. That's the area we want to color in. And we've gone ahead and told this layer we're masking out everything else around the outside and just the black area here is what we'll be able to color in later on. So tap on your selection tool when you're done. Then go back to your layer now for the dog. And the next one we need to select here is white. So we go ahead and go to our selection tool again. We tap on white and that's now selected sort of the main nose. And then we need to go ahead and select every area that's white. So there may be tiny little specks here and there. We've got the chin and that will also select the background as well. We did that on purpose so that we can isolate just the face, and get rid of the background completely. And as I mentioned, you may need to go ahead and zoom in on all these little areas and select all the white areas. I wouldn't go ahead and select too many of the tiniest little selections here. You just want to sort of focus on the main points. So you don't need to spend forever selecting every tiny little speck here completely up to you though if you want to. We're going to go ahead and then take a look and make sure we don't miss any selections. So we're just selecting all the white and you can see up here now we've got lots of little bits of fur here in there. So I can also see the eye here and the underside of the eye. If I select this area it's all grouped together so I should be able to select quite a bit of it. And this is what I mentioned we've got lots of fur here and lots of little bits. We don't need to necessarily select all of that for the whites. I'm just going to go in here now and select as much as I think we can. If you make an error like that, it's no problem. You can simply tap with two fingers. It doesn't 
make the adjustment straight away. You need to go ahead and tap on your next selection and it will undo it at the same time. Bit of a bug, I would say. So we're selecting all the white areas now. And believe me, this will make life super easy in the end because all of your shape selection is already done for you and you don't need to go ahead and manually paint in anything. This is all gonna help us just very quickly go ahead and paint in your pet of choice. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and just grab little bits in here. I'm gonna move over to here and select the majority of this white area here. You may need to pause the video for your particular pet and just crack on with this step, depending on what you see on your screen, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the bits around the eye just so that they're nice and identifiable. And they nicely round off the eye. Zoom in out. There's a little speck over here of white. And I think, to be honest with you, that's all I'm gonna go ahead and do for this. Then what we go ahead and do is go back to our layers. We tap on the white layer. We tap on it again and we mask it in exactly the same way. Now you've told it that's the area of white selection and to mask out everything else. The next color in my layers here is red. So I go back down to the image of the dog. I need to cancel my selection from the previous one and then tap on it again to select. And now of course we're selecting just all the red areas. So I'm gonna start here. And I'm gonna go around and select all the red areas and it's really good when they're all linked together nicely. You may need to zoom right in on some occasions just to grab little areas here and there. Zooming out, you can see here. I need to go ahead and start making my way up the side of the nose. And let's get in here and select all the red areas. Not missing any selections. A nice big chunky bit in the eye there and as you can see there's not really a great deal of being specific in this section of the tutorial so you just need to go ahead and just select the colors so you can see on the screen and basically isolate them from one another so grab a little bit of detail there in the eye and grab some here and select some little areas of detail this will look nice around this yellow spot later on this zoom in out have i missed any rather large areas i've got a little bit on the ear here and i think that is everything that we would need potentially a little bit on this edge as well and then zooming out i've now made all my selections that i want for the red areas i'm then going to go ahead and go back to my layers i'm going to go ahead and tap on the red layer tap on it and mask it then go ahead and your next layer is yellow so we go back down to the dog image, we cancel our previous selection because we're done with that and we start a new selection by tapping on it again. This time we're selecting all the yellow areas. These are all nicely linked up so that saved a nice bit of time there. And we select all of the yellow areas now, which is going to be our other colour for this colour scheme. We've got these nice big areas here, a little bit in the eye, let's not forget that. We've got some nice yellow areas here on the nose, a couple of specks here and there. Love these little eyebrows on this dog. Grab all the yellow areas. Make sure we don't miss any of the large selections. I think that's pretty much everything. So then again, we go back to our layers. We tap on yellow, we tap on it and we mask it. And then cancel your selection. And I promise you, that's the longest part of the tutorial and the most painstaking in terms of selecting all the shapes, I can go ahead and have some fun and start coloring it in. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom out of our canvas. This colored image of the dog is now technically done with, so we can turn that off for a second or otherwise delete it if you wish. We're then gonna go ahead and start in the black layer. So we wanna make sure we're not on the mask. You'll know which one you're on because it goes to darker blue and you wanna be on this part of the layer here. Go up to your colors, double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black to your brush library and you're going to want to scroll all the way down on your brush library to the water section we're going to start off with a wash and my brush settings are maxed out opacity and the brush size doesn't really matter too much we're just going to go ahead and cover the screen pretty much so about 16 percent and you're going to want to just simply gloss over the screen very lightly pressure is very important with this particular design 
until you identify the majority of the silhouette of that layer. And then from there, you can start to then overlap it a little bit more with a little darker tone. And with watercolor, it looks great when you go round the outside edge with a slightly darker little wash. I'm just gonna go around this edge here, around this edge here too, around the top. I'm gonna reduce the brush size down to about 10% and just get into these little areas here. So on the bridge of the nose, of course, around the eye, we need to identify that quite a bit. And then you can go ahead and just leave little patches here and there that are slightly lighter. So I've just run my sort of wash in here a little bit more and left little areas that are a little bit darker around the ears here around the top i'm going to just introduce some more color bring that round the top of the head and then also let's make sure that little nose is nice and dark as well then round all the edges quite a bit and then making sure they all have like a nice little wash on the outside edge a little something like this and now you've got your black layer already done what we're then going to go ahead and do is while we're on this layer we tap on the mask we go to our adjustments we go to gauge and blur and we swipe from left to right until you get at the top here just a two percent blur just very tiny and then tap on your adjustments when you're done but the goal of this is every layer when we do the gauge and blur is to make it look a little bit more realistic not so solid shaped and not so sharp around those little areas here so i make it look a bit more watercolor of course the next layer to go up to is the white one so we go ahead and tap on the white layer here make sure again we're not on the mask and we're on the layer we go up to our colors and double tap in the top left hand corner to select white we're then going to go to our brush library and we're going to go ahead and use this one here the mad splashes brush now my opacity here is set to 39 percent and my brush size is set to 14 percent because this particular brush is quite easy to go mad with very easily and with watercolor it's really cool to build it up now the white selection is technically everything around the outside and the main parts of white on the dog's face so i'm going to simply just run my brush up and down the face a few times until we get some nice splatters that just very subtly make their way around the outside edge and just run that all the way around and through the dog's face you don't want to go too crazy because you can see here it's very subtle but there's a gap here if I zoom right in, you can actually see this shape here, where the white here I've painted in on this area here, and this is left transparent, ready for the next color that we add. So just add in a little bit like that until you add some splashes also around the outside. I'm just gonna make sure we've got some nice splashes there. Now, the next step is to go ahead and do the colored areas. So the next color up is red. Now, what I want you to do for this one is if you go up to your colors and double tap in the top right hand corner, that will give you the most primary color and drag that into the red section for a second for me. If we go back to the layer and we go back to the red layer, making sure you're not on the mask and you're on the actual layer itself, just tap on the layer and use the option of fill. Now what we've done there for a split second is just identified where this layer here is gonna show. So what we can do is we can zoom in on a rather large section. So I'm gonna zoom in just here on the left-hand side of the nose into this red area here. We're gonna use it as a guide very quickly what we're going to do is if you pretty much hold your finger over this area ready to go and then in your layers at the very top we've got the original dog image that we had the original photograph if you turn that on hold your pen down uh, or your finger down and grab the color that's all you need to do is just hold your finger down and grab the color and then once you've grabbed it you can turn off the photo at the very top and then the red layer here tap on it and use the option of clear so what we've done there is temporarily is used the color of the actual dog ready now to paint in the colored areas of it. For a second, we're gonna go up to our colors. If you want to, you can go ahead and go to your palette and create a new one up here in the top right hand corner. And then you can go ahead and drop that color on here. So that's your darkest tone. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is go to your brush library again. We're gonna go ahead and use the wash leave the settings as it was just before and then again just gloss over very lightly over the image of the dog and you'll see all these sections now that we selected previously are now going to start to reveal themselves with that color so very light wash here you can see we've now really started to sort of bring it to life a bit more with some color so nice light wash there we're then going to go to our layers we're gonna go up to the yellow layer and we're gonna repeat the steps we just did a second ago. 
So make sure you're on the yellow layer itself. Go ahead and go to your colors. Double tap in the top right hand corner. And then you can grab yellow if you want to, to be specific. And go to your color and drag it onto the screen. And you'll see all the yellow areas now identify themselves. Now again, you can go ahead and zoom in on a particular section, a nice large area here. You can hold your finger in anticipation, ready to go. Go up to your layers, turn on the photograph, and then clear your layers out of the way, and then pop your finger down on the screen. Now you do necessarily want to grab the lighter tone. If there's two tones right next to each other, you want to grab the lighter version of it. So I've grabbed a nice light orange, and if I pop it in my palette, you can actually see the difference between the two. So yellow was to identify the areas that are brighter and the red areas we did on the selection at the beginning was identifying the darker areas of color. We then go back to our layer. We tap on the yellow layer here and use the option of clear and we turn off the photograph at the top. When we zoom out, we can then go ahead and continue with our brush, which should still be the wash and the color we just had previously selected. And again, very lightly just gloss over all of the layers here and you'll identify all those nice little areas of yellowy color for this particular dog and just around the bottom of the neck here like so and then you've now got a nice colored version of the dog now just like we did with the black layers before we need to tap on the mask we need to go to our adjustments gaussian blur and swipe from left to right adding in a two percent gaussian blur at the top there tap on your adjustments when you're done. Open your layers, go down to the red layer labeled and go to the mask above it. Tap on your adjustments, charge and blur and swipe from left to right, adding in a 2% blur. And then tap on your adjustments when you're done. So now you've basically done all the foundation work. You can now have some fun adding in some water splats. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our layers at the very bottom here, just above what was the original colored dog area. We're gonna create a new layer. And then with the color we just had selected, which was this color here, the lighter tone still, we're gonna to go to our brush library. We're gonna to go to water flicks. My opacity for this is set really low, about 24%. And my brush size for the moment is 10%. And then anywhere where that lighter color is out of the two, I'm just gonna simply start to just brush over it super lightly and just randomly. And we're gonna drop in some cool little water splats here and there. So anywhere where there's some yellow, we can go a bit sort of crazy. There's a slight variation in the colors, a little bit here. And you can just let some of those just run out towards the edge of the body of the dog, if you like. A little bit like that. So we've got some nice splats up here. Let's just add a few on purpose, just some nice splats here and there. Let's then go to our colors and grab the darker color that you added to your palette, which is the darker tone. And again, just run over those areas of the dog. So I'm going to run over this section here. There's a little line that runs there, a little bit on the nose. I'm going to add quite a few on here. And I'm going to go ahead and take a look. We've got a little bit around this edge of the ear, a little bit up here. And this is the fun part because it can be nice and random. You don't need to spend too much time worrying about exactly where they drop. Let the brush do the work. A little bit in the eye. And again, a little bit maybe just down here. You can already see it's coming to life with that watercolor design and again just drop in some random splats here and there around the outside then go ahead and go to your colors double tap at the bottom of the disc to select black and this time go ahead and change your brush size from what was uh, 10 percent up to now 29 percent and we're going to run over the black areas of the dog so we're just going to run around the outside here adding in some cool splats here and there and not necessarily actually running your brush up and down the line. You've got to take it on and off here and there. Run into the black areas here and just drop some nice splats across the design. Adding in some more down the bottom area here. And then you get a nice little random selection like that. It looks awesome. And then we can go ahead and go to our brush library. And there's one more big one we can use, which is the blotch brush. Now my opacity for this one is set to 28%. And the brush size is set to 53. And again, you can just tap away, adding in some really cool, big, random blotches of color. These ones are going to be really big, so be quite sparing with them in comparison to the rest. And you don't want anything to necessarily go too close to the edge. Again, you can always drop your color in, so you could go back to your two colors that you added in your palette. And again, just drop it on the areas here and there. 
that you added in just to add in some cool little splats here and there and let it be nice and loose so you've added all your splats in the background now the next step is to start moving on to the smudging step so what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our layers we've got this nice background image here of all of our little paint splats we're going to select that of course by tapping on it and then swipe from left to right on every layer all the way up to the top excluding the photograph at the top so we've got the background splats the black white red and yellow and group them together then you're going to want to go ahead and tap on the group and use the option of flatten and that will merge all your layers into one so you need to be happy with your design up until now what we're then going to go ahead and do is go to that layer and swipe it to the left and duplicate it the bottom one out the two go to your adjustments go to gauge and blur and blur that out all the way up to something maybe around sort of 50 percent and what that will do is that will just chuck a little bit of the color of the design onto the canvas in the back and tap on your gauge and blur when you're done and you'll also be able to identify your nice white splats in there as well what you can then do is go to your layers and go up to the flattened layer that you had above we're then going to go to the smudge tool here so tap on your smudge tool go to the water selection of brushes and we're going to use the wet glaze brush now the brush opacity is set to 51 percent and the brush size is set to four percent what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and zoom in and where we've got all these really fine bits of detail they're too fine for a watercolor design and all we're going to do is just start to just smudge them out so you can just bring some of the black across here and just just start to blend it out push some of these sort of areas here you can just literally just rush run the pen up and down if you want to just to literally smudge them all together but what i also recommend you do is if you go up to your actions and you go ahead and go to canvas go ahead and turn on reference and then go to image and tap on import image you're going to want to select the image of the dog from your actual gallery and then you can go ahead and make that a little bit smaller but you can zoom in on the dog as well and you can move this little window around by grabbing that handle and moving it up into the top left by doing that you can also see certain areas that you may need to identify and start to bring in a little bit more color for example here on the nose it's a little bit gray where the white and black fur start to merge together so i can see here on my design i'm going to go ahead and start to smudge in some of these colors here just to start to give that impression that the black areas here is where it nicely blends into the white fur as well so just blending that across a little bit more like so so just very minor you don't want to do too much of this because if you do too much it's going to start to look like a really sort of realism look but just a little things like that you can then just blare out little solid lines like this and occasionally on a line maybe just blare it out just a smidge you can still see the outline of it but you just take away a little bit more of that sharpness and this will be totally different depending on your particular pet and how much you want to or not do at this particular stage and it's totally optional to be honest but in certain areas it really gives off a nice impression such as here we've got a beautiful little bit of light reflection on the nose so I'm just going to push the lighter area left and right here to give a nice soft glossy look on the top of the nose the eyes though is a beautiful place to start you can smudge the color up and around the eye here let's move that round like that really start to give off a nice smooth crystally look and then the highlight just push it out to the right so you still get a nice soft edge around it but you also leave a little bit of that firm look in terms of the original shape so you get a nice glossy look to the eye let's do the other side so i'm going to go ahead and literally just push it around the curvature of the eye and again depending on your photograph you may or may not have uh, the eyes as exposed as they are in this one but it's something you can do i want to talk you through all the little tips that you can do a little something like that these eyes look how beautiful they look nice and glossy and then you can go ahead and little areas like this nicely smudge them out a little bit more maybe blend the colors you can, if you blend the color into the dark fur that looks pretty good and let's go ahead and get rid of some of these little details above eyebrows there and this is just meant to look like water bleed essentially so you've just 
literally just put the black down and it's bled into these areas and you can always push the color up and out if you want to on top of the ear here you can just push it outwards because again this is meant to look like a realistic watercolor design so i'm going to push this bit of color here on the on the ear just going to blend that into the darker areas and then here where there's a little bit of a disconnect where the ear overlaps on itself i'm just going to smudge that into itself also connect it back up here as well so blend them together nicely like so oh look at those eyes look at those eyes let's then go ahead and look up just over here a little bit of blurring little bit of blurring little bit of blurring but as i mentioned leave some nice solid shapes in there too it's just to take away that kind of very sort of digital look to it so you want to just make it look a little bit more realistic that really soft hand-drawn look to it blend these little areas here together and if you've completed your smudging step you're actually done with today's tutorial but if you're not particularly happy with the colors that have come out on your particular design there's a quick and easy way to do it if you go up to your adjustments go ahead and go to hue saturation and brightness and you can go ahead and increase the saturation up and a lot of the time this tends to look really effective and you get these really nice bright colors so i'm going to go up to about 90 percent on this one and then tap on my adjustments when I'm done and you end up with a much brighter, more colourful version of your watercolour. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, please drop a like down below. And as always, be sure to share your creations with me over on Instagram. There's a link to all my socials in the description down below. If you're new here, I post Procreate content every single week. So hit that subscribe button down below. And there's always a massive shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. I'll throw their names up on the screen now. Patreon supporters get access to three exclusive tutorials every single month. I thought the links through on the screen now that I've been posting over there. Not only do patrons get access to exclusive tutorials, but sneak peeks of upcoming designs, early access to videos, and much, much more. So hit the link in the description down below and come and show your support. And as always, if you're interested in any of the equipment I'm using, the Sketchboard Pro that you can use code JOELCREATE to get yourself 10% off of, or a paperlike screen cover that I use, or the pen tips, grip, and glove, there's links to all my equipment in the description. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.